بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیئر اینڈ ٹو ڈے واٹ ٹو ڈے وی اسٹڈی دی ولڈ امپیئر کیریکٹرسٹکس آف اے پی انجنکشن ڈائی آؤٹ سو ولڈ امپیئر کیریکٹرسٹکس آر واٹ اینڈ آئی ہوپ دا کیریکٹرسٹک اسپیلنگ از رائٹ اف اٹس ناٹ سو ڈز اٹ میٹر اٹس ناٹ این انگلش کلاس اینی ویز سو ولڈ امپیئر مینس واٹ یو نو اٹ ویری ویل سو اٹس دا ولٹیج ورس از دی کرنٹ کیریکٹرسٹکس اور بیسیکلی اٹس دا کرنٹ ورس از دا ولٹیج آن دی ہاریزونٹل ایکسس وی ہیو دا انڈیپینڈنٹ ولٹیج دا انڈیپینڈنٹ ویریبل از ولٹیج دا ڈیپینڈنٹ ویریبل از دی کرنٹ سو ویل بی ڈرائنگ ا گراف آف اٹ Fine. And over here, I've drawn what? I've drawn a P injunction diode. Over here, the P side. Over here, the N side. This is the junction. This is the depletion region. Fine. And this is the symbol of the di uh, symbol of the diode. So in the previous video, I said that the black is the P type. The blue is the N type. With the 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 red, the vertical line represents the the junction. But it represents the depletion layer, I believe. So uh, I have not it have not confirmed it from the book. Anyways, you guys confirm it. So the 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 horizontal the the vertical line. the red line either it represents the junction or it represents the depletion layer so you confirm it whatever it does anyways and the weather has significantly changed today is quite cold it has rained a lot yesterday and rained very heavily and yesterday was also another uh, important day and in a sense what if i tell you if i give you a hint that we want a match and we won it by 10 wickets <laughs> yes so yes yes we won it very good anyways uh no disrespect to anybody it was a match a cricket match although i did not watch a single ball of it but when i saw that they won by 10 wickets so i felt quite happy yes so anyways the topic is not the match it's the world ampere characteristics of the diode so let me draw it a little big so that we draw three characteristics on it so if this is the this is the current axis id and this current is in the milliampere's range this is the voltage across the diode if i show it in volts let's say but the scales would be different for both the sides and i'll tell you then i'll tell it to you later on what is this and over here this would represent the reverse current the reverse saturation current and this is in the range of pico amperes generally or micro amperes but let's say we we go with the pico amperes so first of all the relation so the relation was what it was is uh id is equal to the current through the diode id it's equal to is times and then you have an exponential of vd upon n or eta i don't know is vt minus 1 so this is the 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 relation of the diode current with respect to what with respect to your vd vt is some constant you know it's a thermal equivalent of voltage you know let's say and i gave you a value to room temperature and then we have is is the reverse saturation current so that also we will consider it to be a small value most probably 10 pico amperes it's given in the book fine so we'll draw the graph over that values with respect to vd anyways first of all when you have got a no bias condition when you've got your no bias condition so which means that when uh no biasing so no biasing implies what this implies that your vd is zero yes you've got no applied potential so if vd becomes zero so have a look what happens exponential to the power zero is one one minus one is a zero and no current theoretically no current id is zero although we've got a reverse leakage current which you know very well but from the mathematical formula we don't have any current so in the no bias condition we'll have it over here fine for the forward biasing forward biasing what happens in the forward biasing so in the forward biasing you have that your vd is greater than 0 
vd is greater than 0, right? So have a look. When you have something exponential to the power, something greater than 0, what's that? That's an exponential growth. Exponential growth. And exponential growth is a rapid growth. And you have a minus 1, doesn't matter. Exponential growth to, the, to, to minus 1 doesn't matter. You say you have an exponential to the power 10 is something 2000 something. You have a minus 1, doesn't matter. Similarly, then if you go for exponential to the power 15, it would be something greater amount, let's say 5000. So 5000 minus 1 is 4099, so, 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 so doesn't matter. So, which means the minus 1 effect cancels out, is you have and you will multiply it to that, which means you have some positive value but a greater value. I'm not going to take each and every value of the VD and plot each and every values over here, but I'm telling you it will be something, a greater rise. So, ID, I would write it greater than 0 and I would say a rapid increase. But the rapid increase also has a threshold first. First, you have to overcome the barrier potential. First, you have to overcome the barrier potential. And the barrier potential for germanium is 0 0.3. For germanium, it's 0 0.3. So if I write a 0 0.3 over here, so what would happen is that you would have a zero current till 0 0.3. And when you reach this 0 0.3, so after this, a little amount you would have an exponential increase I hope the graph is fine this is for germanium why because for germanium the barrier potential is 0 0.3 and what's the barrier potential represented by I believe it's VB VB for germanium is 0 0.3 now why did I not draw a vertical line? And why did I not draw it at a proper 0 0.3 if I'm drawing it in exponential as well? So first of all, uh, it's not a vertical line because of the mathematical formula, right? It's an exponential increase. And why did I not draw it at 0 0.3? So that's a good question. That's a great question. So at 0 0.3, I did not draw it because the book has got an answer to this. The book has got an answer to this. And where is it? Over here somewhere. I've marked it. Uh, yes, so it's mentioned on page number, uh, page number 15 of the book that it is due to the internal resistance. The diode will have some internal resistance over here and the contact resistances. So we connected over here. We did not connect the terminals of the battery directly through over here. We had a metallic contact. We had a metallic contact. So the thing is that if I'm not drawing it directly at a 0 0.3 and similarly for the others, I will not draw it directly at the barrier potential because of these two points. And what are those two points? So those two points are number one is your body resistance. I will say that the internal body resistance, internal body resistance, and number second is what? Number second is your contact resistance. So it will have, it will need a little voltage, a little voltage to overcome these two as well. And that little voltage I have shown over here. Is that fine till here? It should be. This is the case for forward biasing. And if I draw it for the, for the other two as well. So for, for, for the silicon, it's 0 0.7. So let's say I draw 0 0.7 over here. So it would the current would be 0 till 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 0 0.7. And after a little way of 0 0.7, it will increase. So this is for silicon. So because the barrier potential for silicon, this is equal to 0 0.7. Is that fine till here? It should be. Yes, and we've also got it for gallium arsenide, I believe, and I've not drawn it over here and has the book drawn it. Uh, yes, it has. So, so the barrier potential for gallium arsenide is 1.2. So the barrier potential, I will draw it. Uh, Vb for gallium arsenide is 1.2. 
So if I have a 1.2, let's say somewhere over here, although these are not proper graphs, so it's zero till here and it will increase. This is for gallium arsenide. And I believe I've drawn them properly. Fine. And maybe the book has drawn a little over here for the 0 0.3 uh, to, 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 you know, just, uh, you know, not explaining these two points in a greater detail. But they mentioned these two points. So once you've mentioned these two points, then you need to draw it at this level. Otherwise, if you want to draw it at 0 0.3, you, you need to increase it a little before the 0 0.3. Let's say if, if this is my 0 0.3, so you want to show the knee over here. A little increase before 0 0.3 and a jump at 0 0.3 so then you do not need to mention these two points if you mention these two points then you need to show it a little to the right of the knee and then the knee a little right a little to the right of the barrier potential is that fine it is all right so this is the forward biasing case and in the forward biasing you know the mechanism whatever it is the ma the majority charge carriers are responsible for the current and if i if i show the directions over here so i majority flows in this direction i minority flows in this direction and the net direction depends on the the, the value of the applied voltage and uh, yes you know you know it you know it now coming to the reverse biasing coming to the reverse biasing so first of all the practical aspect what do we we know in the reverse biasing that the current is due to the minority charge carriers and it's only the drift current it's only due to the electric field applied so what happens it is a very very small amount of current a very very small a very minute amount of current so what do we do we say that if we d is less than zero so this implies what this implies what have a look and so from the mathematical expression now you have an exponential to the power something negative in the in the power and we don't say it exponential to the power something you know it from your basic mathematics we say exponential of this thing fine when we say, when we write 2 to the power 2 so that we say 2 to the power 2 but when we write exponential and we have something in the power so we don't say exponential to the power 2 we say exponential of 2 so over here we have exponential of Vd upon Nvt. It's N or eta, you confirm it in the book. It's the ideality factor, you know the details of it. So what happens is that this would be an exponential dk. This would be an exponential dk, which means this is something that would tend to zero as we increase the voltage. Fine. So if this is tending to zero, you have a zero negative one. So which means that your current would come out to be what? You have an ID. This is approximated to a negative IS. Approximated to a negative IS. And is that fine? It is. Now let me check the, the values of negative IS for these three things. So for germanium, we have uh, about uh, one microampere germanium is with black color so we have a one microampere we have a one microampere uh, and how is it drawn yes it is like so one microampere is let's say somewhere over here this is your one microampere this is your graph now a region will come a region will come where for germanium this is 50 volts and and i've already mentioned the unit of volts so no need to write this wall. 
a region will come when you increase the voltage beyond that level it's not only the reverse saturation current the reverse current will have a rapid increase in the opposite direction to that of the forward region and this current is the reverse saturation current and this region is called the breakdown region or it's called the zener region and the potential at which this breakdown occurs is called the breakdown voltage breakdown voltage and if you want me to write the the definition so the voltage reverse biased voltage okay at which breakdown occurs and what's breakdown so you, you write it for yourself a rapid increase in the reverse saturation current or let me write it breakdown is what breakdown breakdown is a rapid increase in the reverse saturation current in a direction opposite to the forward region in a direction opposite to the forward region is that fine and this region is called the breakdown region or it's called the zener region and for this we have the next video why this occurs how this occurs so if i if i see in this video so it will get long it will get boring we have the next video for it so the breakdown voltage for germanium and, and this breakdown voltage is represented by, by a v and in the subscript you have a vbv so vbv for germanium is 50 volts approximately and at an average 50 volts the proper values are given in the book fine yes similarly then you have what then i have the red color is for silicon the current is 10 pico amperes and the breakdown voltage is about it's not given it is given uh one pico ampere uh, wait 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 just give me a minute for one microampere for germanium for silicon it's 10 pico amperes and what about the breakdown voltage so anyways we will we, we'll read it out from the book then but let's say first uh, the the current so the current is for silicon it's 10 pico amperes 10 pico amperes is let's say somewhere over here let's say it's 10 pico amperes and and we draw the graph like this so and, and and then the breakdown voltage comes and you have a breakdown of this so so this breakdown voltage i will tell you from the book fine let's say i remove it first over here i i, I set it over an average but the 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 range is i believe written in the book fine and similarly then you have the green lies on the top it's gallium arsenide the reverse current is a one microampere one pico ampere and i and i believe i don't need to write the pico amperes because the scale and the scale i have mentioned it pico amperes and i believe that you know the rules of drawing a graph and the breakdown voltage for this is the maximum is that fine till here now this uh, that i've shown this increase of the current that is this region this region this region this is called the breakdown region or it's called the zener region although we have a little difference we don't have any difference sorry we'll study this in a greater detail in the next video 
the phenomena why this breakdown occurs how this breakdown occurs let's say we read out some points from the book and if we've got the if we've got the uh, all it's shown in the book you know for breakdown voltage for silicon for germanium it's the values are not given the values are not given so let's say we have uh, we read it out a little from the book but I don't think and when I say reverse saturation current and when I say the reverse current so there's a difference in these two so please note down note down okay the reverse saturation current is the current that we get from the mathematical expressions from the mathematical formulas when I say reverse saturation current but when I say reverse current so that is the actual the experimental current that is not from the, the from this and these two values differ by a large amount you will see in the temperature effect I will tell you that the reverse saturation current that is mathematical current it it, it, it differs by by some by some range for every 5 degree rise in temperature whereas actually actually that difference is caused by a by a 10 degree rise in temperature fine and I believe that doubles fine that doubles and we will see it in the we'll see the temperature effect video so this is one very important point this is one very important point okay so over here we have a 0.3 volt for germanium 0.7 for silicon 1.2 for gallium arsenide uh, that's done for gallium arsenide the, the reverse saturation current 1 picoampere 10 picoampere for silicon 1 microampere for germanium relative magnitude of breakdown voltage for gallium arsenide maximum breakdown voltage gallium arsenide has the maximum breakdown voltage uh, okay extend uh, and extend between uh, 50 volts and 1 kilo volt the silicon power they are silicon powered diodes uh, with voltage breakdown as high as 20 kilowatts germanium has typically a voltage less than 100 volts with a maximum around 400 volts so you can uh, write it down or do you want me to write it so the breakdown voltage is range range of breakdown voltages so for germanium it's about 100 to 400 less than 100 to 400 breakdown voltage for germanium is what it's about less than 100 uh, is less than 100 to a maximum of 400 right and then we have uh, the silicon lies after this where we have about uh, the range is given that the range is not given over here but gallium arsenide and silicon both have what about 50 volts to 1 kilovolt we break down voltage for silicon and gallium arsenide are about the same and that is what is 50 volts to 1 kilovolt that is the range but typically typically the gallium arsenide has the highest uh, breakdown voltage fine and one other point is written in the book that that there are silicon power diodes with voltage as high as 20 kilovolts fine so silicon has some power diodes are made of silicon which has a breakdown voltage as high as 20 kilovolts so this is a very high voltage fine and i believe i finished this video over here it has got very long the electron mobility factor is given which shows you the speed of the electrons and the, the speed of the charge carriers inside and and that determines the operating speed of the device that it has to be used in so in that case i believe that gallium arsenide has got the highest speed uh, yes, uh, so gallium arsenide stands out with a mobility factor more than five times that of silicon and twice that of germanium. Silicon is found in systems in the gigahertz range. 
Anyways, I finished this video over here. It has got long and I don't want you guys to get bored. See you in the next video with the breakdown region. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Goodbye.